Is Google Analytics illegal in the UK and the EU? If you use Google Analytics, have you heard about the three decisions from European regulators in early 2022 that the use of Google Analytics was not compliant with GDPR? We'll take a rapid look at these three key decisions, Google's response, and what this means for you in practice at your organization. And stick with us as we'll give you some leads on potential alternatives at the end. Hi, I'm Robert Bohr, the founder and CEO of Keepable, the award-winning privacy management software, saving you time, money, and stress, giving you a great answer for the board and customers. Do check us out at keepable.com. This video is part of Privacy Kitchen, free video help with GDPR and all things privacy. If you're new here, please do click subscribe and notify and hear about the awesome new Privacy Kitchen videos. As always, links are in the notes below. Now we'll just say GDPR again because the UK and EU GDPRs are the same here and TREMS 2 applies in the UK as much as it does in the EU. But obviously the regulatory approach from the UK is a bit up in the air at the moment on this about whether it's the same or slightly different to Europe. Right, so with that said, grab a cup of coffee and let's crack on. The big context is the CJEU's TREMS 2 decision in July 2020. If you don't know it, we have a great video on that, links and notes below. But in summary, Schrems 2 dismantled Privacy Shield, the US's adequacy decision, and immediately made transfer of personal data to cloud providers in the States, problematic is the word used, under both UK and EU GDPRs. So why these decisions now? Well, none of your business, Max Schrems' body, is going after low-hanging fruit. 101 complaints were filed against well-known organizations throughout Europe on their use of Google Analytics and Facebook, in particular the transfer of personal data to the US, and particularly when a website visitor was also logged into Google or Facebook. Now these complaints were filed from early August 2020, less than a month after the Schrems 2 decision. They've taken until January 2022 to work through the system, so expect more decisions to start flooding through. And why Google Analytics? Well. The issue the regulators have with Google Analytics is you end up sending personal data to Google LLC in the USA. And this makes it an easy one for none of your business to go after. As the regulator for European institutions stated, the EDPS, tracking cookies such as Google Analytics cookies are considered personal data, even if the traditional identity parameters of the track users are unknown or have been deleted by the tracker after collection. And then there's the transfer to Google LLC in the USA, which being a, a US corporation is subject to surveillance law there, including Visa 702. So let's look at those decisions a bit more, starting with the EDPS. The European Data Protection Supervisor received complaints from members of the European Parliament and from NOYB, but separate to the 101 complaints, about the use of cookies on an internal coronavirus testing website and the transfer of resulting data to the US. In January 2022, they ruled that personal data was collected and transferred to Google in the US, as we saw. And post TREMS 2, the European Parliament should have had a document to hand detailing whether supplemental measures could make good the issues with US surveillance law and what those measures were. However, the EDPS said that the Parliament provided no documentation, evidence or other information regarding contractual, technical or organisational measures in place to ensure an essentially equivalent level of protection. And on that basis, they'd failed to comply with the rules on transfers. So the practical lesson here is to review your transfers and document that review and your decision process. Okay, the next one, Austria. Also in January 2022, the Austrian Data Protection Authority, the DSB, was the first EU member state regulator to issue a decision on one of those 101 complaints. The case concerned Google Analytics on a health website in Austria and a website visitor logged into their Google account. Cookies were dropped, information sent to Google in the US, led to the same sort of decision that the transfer was contrary to GDPR. But the Austrian decision is interesting for a couple of reasons. First, the DSB looked at the standard contractual clauses and the supplemental measures in place, and they confirmed, this is NOYB's translation, insofar as the technical measures are concerned, it's also not recognizable to what extent the measure would actually prevent or limit access by US intelligence agencies considering US law. This is the unpopular truth that no amount of contractual wording, stages of review, or physical security can override a legally binding order under US law for a US recipient. And secondly, according to NOYB's case summary, the DSB noted the fact that Google allows a user to opt in and out of personalized ads 
shows that Google LLC possesses all means to identify the data subject. Right, the French decision. So after a series of complaints, the French data protection agency, CANIL, also declared that the use of Google Analytics constituted a breach of the transfer provisions in GDPR. CANIL stated simply that they consider that these transfers are illegal and ordered a French website manager to comply with the GDPR and if necessary to stop using the service under the current conditions. There are six key takeaways from the decision. Canil noted that various information could be combined to identify the individual, that it's not necessary to be able to know the name and address for a person to be identifiable. Google received further information when a website visitors logged into their Google account at the time, that they reviewed the additional measures in place by Google and held they're not sufficient to exclude accessibility of the data for US intelligence services. It couldn't have helped there that Canil couldn't find confirmation from Google whether anonymization of IP addresses happened before or after transfer. And interestingly, Canil noted that Google held the encryption keys and so could provide access if ordered. And lastly, that the UUIDs, these unique user IDs, are not pseudonymized data. Their whole purpose is to identify individuals. Very interesting on that one. Okay, so let's look at Google's response. Well, as well as any responses in the cases themselves, Kent Walker, their president, global affairs, and chief legal officer at Google and Alphabet, responded in January 22 with a pretty clear wish for a privacy shield replacement. I think we all want that and a heartfelt claim that Google's supplemental measures are indeed sufficient for Schrems too. He held firm to the fact Google had been supporting businesses with Google Analytics for 15 years, and in that time they'd never once received the type of demand the DPA speculated about, referring to the Austrian decision. So what about this question of risk? Well, these decisions don't look good for the risk-based approach. The EDPS didn't even really talk about risk to individuals of their data being accessed by the US authorities. The DSB held that the measures and the machine translation is it didn't eliminate such access. And like the DSB, Canil held that none of the measures exclude such access. Not much risk based there. So what does this mean for you and your organization? Well, no one likes to have friction in doing business and using the tools you're already using. And there's lots of politically and commercially charged debate on these decisions and indeed on TREMS too. Aside from the emotion, there are arguments coming out from lawyers and other commentators on how you can set up Google Analytics to not infringe. However, without getting into the weeds, it's hard to technically disagree with these three decisions given Schrems 2 and that they held there were transfers. Unless and until the architecture and data flow for Google Analytics changes, it seems clear you're gonna be running a risk if you use Google Analytics in the EEA and probably in the UK as well. At least without a full deep dive, careful use of available settings and a very reasoned document documented decision. Okay, thanks for sticking with us. Here's our bonus tip about alternatives to Google Analytics. Now you'll appreciate we can't advise you which to use, nor whether these are fully compliant, so much as in the detail and how you actually use them. And there's lots of chatter about this on LinkedIn and in various email lists on the alternatives. We ourselves use Matomo. Uh, the European Commission itself uses a solution based on Matomo. But you'll see there are many others people are looking at, such as Simple Analytics, Plausible, Pyrrhic Pro, uh, Matomo is probably the most well-known of the alternatives at the moment. And a further bonus, regardless of the tool you choose, you've got to abide by the rules of consent on cookies. So there you are, you know about the three regulatory decisions, the issues about transfers, about personal data, having a better understanding of what this means for your organization. Please do look at our other Privacy Kitchen videos, including Privacy Shield is Down and What's a Transfer for GDPR. Do visit us at keepable.com. Get your demo to see how we make operationalizing privacy simple and intuitive, from data mapping to breaches with instant insights. So stay well in the meantime, and we'll see you soon in Privacy Kitchen.